What's up YouTube and welcome to another draw along with me. Today's tutorial is this astronaut being sucked into this some sort of electric looking portal. So if you like this design and want to follow along there's a link in the description to the palette as well as the stamp brush that you're going to need for our astronaut here. If you're new here I post Procreate content every single week so if you'd like some tutorials to follow along with hit the subscribe button down below and turn on the notification bell. And as always a huge shout out to my patrons, I'll throw their names up on the screen now. If you'd like to get access to extra tutorials every single month that are exclusive to patrons as well as access to our Facebook group and extra benefits on my Discord server, hit the link down below and show your support over there. And with all that said, let's get started. And as always, let's create a new canvas for today's tutorial. So let's hit the plus icon and my canvas size is 2500 by 2500. And once we're into our canvas, we're gonna go straight to our layers. We're gonna go to the background color and we're gonna switch it straight out to black. And so on the disc at the top, we're just gonna double tap at the bottom to change it to black. And then while we're here, we're gonna go to our colors. We're gonna go to our palette and we're gonna select this color here in the top left hand corner, the slightly sort of dark blue. We're going to go to our brush library. We are going to go to the airbrushing section and we're going to use the soft airbrush. Now all we're going to do now is simply just paint in some color in the background, nice and faint, not too punchy. So something around about 15 or 16% is good. And I'm just going to just draw in some blue lines across the screen here like that. And just creating some sort of shapes in there. Maybe even increase the brush size to like 30 and just overlay them one more time. Just adding in some extra colour back there, just to give that sort of sky, night sky look to it. So now let's go ahead and add in our stars. So we're going to go to our colours and we're going to select white in the top left hand corner by double tapping in the top left. Then we're going to go to my favourite stipple collection, which I'll leave a link to in the description down below. And we're going to use the light one. And there's always sort of three different levels to this. So you start off quite large, roughly around about 70-80%. And then just tap away adding in some stars in here now you don't want to add too many in terms of the big ones but just position them around the canvas like so and then let's reduce our brush size down to around about let's go for about 30 40 percent and then just tap away in the gaps creating some more stars in there and just spreading out all your stars across the screen and then we're going to eventually end up reducing the brush size down even more. So let's do that now. Let's go down to around about 10 to 15 percent. So I've got 13 on mine. And then I'm just tapping away, pressing, not pressing too hard. Otherwise you'll end up with some very bright white stars. But I just want to fill in a lot of the gaps with the very small stars just to really give this a proper sort of space look to it. So I'm just tapping away in all the gaps, just filling in where necessary. And then if I zoom in, you can see I've got lots of little random stars in here, just in little collections like so. Now let's get started on adding in our spaceman into position and then we'll know where to add in our little portal. So in the description down below, there's a link to the brush that I've added for spaceman three. And if I find that brush here, I'm going to go ahead and on a new layer and tap on our plus icon and my brush size is set to around about 50 percent i'm just going to tap in the middle of the screen and we'll get our little spaceman stamp now for the minute let's just grab our cursor and just position him or her over here on the left hand side but my astronaut's name is cooper so i'm going to stick with him so i reduced mine down ever so slightly and i just made sure with the cursor that it's perfectly in the middle of the canvas so you can do that by turning on snapping as well so just position that like so. So now the concept is that Cooper's getting dragged in into our little portal here on the right hand side. So if you've done the neon tutorial, this next step might be quite familiar in terms of how we'll go about creating this. Let's create a new layer and let's actually create two so we can group them together. So we swipe on the extra one and hit group and then this will be our portal group. So in here we are gonna use white still as our color and we're gonna go to our brush library going to scroll down until I find the calligraphy option and we're going to use the monoline brush and we're going to look at our brush size and it's going to be roughly around about 50%. So we're going to go ahead and create a oval eclipse. So we're just going to draw that in, hold your pen at the end and you'll get an eclipse created at the top and you can just put that in position. So something roughly around about this sort of size, maybe even slightly smaller. Let's go here like so. So now we've got our astronaut in position and our oval for our portal. 
we're going to go ahead now and start to create that sort of neon effect but the first thing we want to do is grab our cursor and let's grab the distort option and what we're going to do is we're going to squeeze one side down of the eclipse so we're going to grab this handle here and this handle here until we start to squeeze this side down a little bit so it becomes slightly thinner on that side and this side will be nice and thick and then we can grab our cursor for uniform now and then just scale that up again until it was the same size that we had before so something like that's good and so we end up with a thinner line on this side and a thicker line there and you want to make sure you grab your cursor and just make sure it's on that orange horizontal axis as well so that's looking good to me now let's go back to our layers and let's tap on this oval and use the option of reference. Now what reference does is every other layer now within the entire document will look at this layer as a guide. So we have used this as a reference meaning if I was to drag and drop a colour into like the middle here on a different layer it will use the outline here as the reference for the shape so it will know only to fill it within the inside. So for example if I go ahead now and grab black from my colors which you're going to need to also do so double tap in the bottom here of the picker and then drag and drop black in it will fill in that center of that oval in black but it's actually on a separate layer because we used the reference layer above so we'll turn off that reference now because we won't need it going forward and now let's go ahead and create the neon effect so on this layer here with the white let's swipe it to the left and duplicate the layer let's go to our colors Let's grab this turquoise color in the palette here and then drag and drop that into the ring and it will go that color. And then what we want to go ahead and do is swipe that to the left and duplicate it. And we should end up now with three rings in total, but then let's swipe on the white one one more time and duplicate that as well and drag that above. So we'll end up with four layers for the ring. We'll end up with a white one, two blue in the middle, cyan or turquoise, and then white at the top. And now on the colored ones, let's go ahead and select the top one out of the two. Let's go to adjustments, Gaussian blur and layer. And then let's swipe this to the left hand side until we hit something quite close in terms of a glow. So maybe something around about, let's go for around about nine or 10%. So I'm gonna go about nine and a half percent. And then we're gonna to go to the second one out of the two now. And then we're gonna to go to our Gaussian blur again and layer and then swipe from left to right and we're going to go a bit bigger now with this one so roughly around about let's double up what we did a second ago so maybe let's try 18 percent something around that mark and then let's go to our layers then the top one out of all of the layers we're going to want to go ahead and go to our adjustments as well and gaussian blur and layer and swipe this to the left ever so slightly we just want to that sort of harsh edge and we want to soften it up so let's go for around about five percent on that so we'll end up with four layers now three of them are all blurred and then this top one in the group we want to tap on that and we want to scroll down until we find the option of add as well which will really punch that sort of bright white look to it and then we'll end up with our portal now in the correct sort of glow so now what we can go ahead and do is pinch these four layers together now this will finish your neon effect so you want to make sure you've nailed it at this point but we're going to pinch all four of those together and then we'll end up with one layer for our big glow. And then we're gonna go ahead and swipe that to the left-hand side and we're gonna to go to duplicate. And then the bottom one out of the two, we're gonna tap on it and we're gonna use the option of clipping mask. So it's clipped to the black layer that we had underneath. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna create that internal glow that looks like it's like another portal, another part of the world inside of it. So we're gonna go up to our adjustments. We are gonna to go to motion blur and layer and we're gonna go from left to right and just add in a bit of a glow. Now ignore this right hand side for this effect. We only wanna look at the left hand side and how far our line's going in. So something roughly like, let's go for this sort of look like so. So I've gone 50.7% at the top there. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our cursor and we're gonna move this in to the right hand side. And now what that will do is it will get rid of the right hand edge because we weren't concerned about that, but it will bring in some more of the left hand edge. So then when we zoom in, you can see we've got this nice sort of internal part with inside the sort of ring here. Now what we're going to do is go to the smudge tool at the top here and we're going to tap on it again and you want to go to painting and you're going to select the dry brush for this one. Now this technique now that I'm going to do is 
it's very manual there's no sort of cheating way of me doing this so what you've got to do is you've got to sort of blur it out but in an angle fashion so you sort of go with the curve a little bit so you you can maybe rotate your canvas if you wanted to such as this and go up and down and then angle it outwards like that and you go up and down and angle it outwards so if i get started on that i'm going to start i'm going to put my canvas in a position that works for me uh what should i go for let's go for here so i'm going to go straight across and i'm just going backwards and forwards all the way up into that top edge and then i'm going to rotate my hand as i go down and then we end up with something like this where all the lines now are making their way inwards and we end up with like some really cool sort of grated lines in there now you can if you get any sort of uh, lumpy lines in there just go back in and smudge them out like i did there but otherwise we end up with that sort of inward looking portal look to it so it's really dragging everything in so then if i zoom out that's really come to life a lot more now and it definitely looks like it's separate from this world that's in the background now let's just quickly go to our layers let's swipe on this ring at the top here and duplicate it so we'll end up with two of the glows but the second one out of the two we're simply going to go to our adjustments gaussian blur and layer and we're really going to max this one out so something really big something like uh let's go for 30.5 percent here it's just an outer glow to be honest at this point just adding in some extra lighting in there and maybe we even drag it down underneath our black portal in this group and hide it under there so that's fine as is so now let's distort this perfect circle and create some nice movement in it which will really bring it to life even more so on this layer here we're going to want to go to our adjustments first of all and we're going to use the option of liquefy and we're going to use the option of push now take a look at my settings across the bottom here we've got 50 58 57 and 58 again and all we're going to do is we're going to just nudge this circle backwards and forwards now the actual size is probably too big though i'm going to go a bit small i'm going to go for 30 percent instead and what we're going to do is we're just going to shimmy left and right just to break that up so it's not so much like a perfect line it's got a bit of movement in it so if i show you what i mean we're going across the line like so now at the bottom here that was too much so again you want to kind of press kind of lightly with this and just build up the movement a little bit but you're just distorting that perfect edge and then we'll do the same on this side as well just moving that line around a little bit more so it looks like it's pulsating now that you'll end up with a nice looking effect like that and then the second step to get this effect looking awesome is go to your crystals effect here and you'll notice my settings have changed ever so slightly where the pressure i think was the same but distortions up to max uh, that's the big difference and i'm going to change my brush size i'm going to go down to 45 percent though for this one and i'm just going to stroke this edge here and if you're quick with the movement it will really start to spike out your look and maybe you can run back over it and the longer you press down on it will really start to disperse that line but it will chunk it up a little bit so bear that in mind and then i'm going to run my brush up the other side as well and then creating that nice distorted portal look to it like so and i'm actually very happy with how that looks so i'm done with that now there's one thing that i'll point out because it may affect quite a lot of users is when you start to distort your line ever so slightly you'll notice you may end up with like a gap here where the black circle in the background now obviously is still an eclipse but your lines obviously distorted so much that it's ended up like moving away from that so just take a look around your line at this point and maybe go back to push reduce your brush size down and just push it so it kind of gets a lot closer to your original eclipse so you don't want to move away from that too much and then when you're done you can tap on your adjustments and complete the process of that one so that's the portal done with now we can go ahead and start to move on to then the lines in the sky and so what you're going to want to do for that is you're going to want to go to your layers let's go down a few layers so let's go to our background layer we've got here with the stars and the blue in the background and let's create a new layer and then with the same color selected we're going to go to our brushes and we're going to use a brush that you wouldn't really use for this but it actually works out quite nicely we're going to go to the touch-ups section and we're going to use the flowing hair brush because there's lots of thin lines within this brush that's going to make this really pop and then what we're going to do is we are going to go and my brush size is set to max which i think is perfect and all you're going to want to do is stroke across the screen in a perfectly horizontal fashion and then we'll go ahead and distort it afterwards but you want to do a lot of lines across the screen 
uh, left to right and hold your pen at the end to get a perfectly straight line. So we're going straight across like this, hold your pen at the end and pop your finger on the screen. You'll also get a perfectly horizontal line and then just continue to do that backwards and forwards until you fill up the majority of the screen. So we're going from the bottom all the way, well, the middle all the way up to the top. And I'm just brushing across the screen, holding my pen and then popping my finger on the screen. Now don't go all the way to the very edge. Leave a gap, that's fine. We will use that in a second to our advantage. And then hold your pen, put your finger on the screen. And again, continuing just to draw in those lines. If you leave any gaps, it's cool. That actually will help as well. Just It's a perfect thing to do. Just leave some gaps in between them. And now what you can do is start to look and maybe think about where you maybe want to punch out some colors more. So maybe, you know, add in an extra line here on top and then maybe another one here, for example. Uh, you don't want to do too many lines that are too punchy, but you can maybe go back in and overlap a few lines if you wanted to, just to really give some extra color. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and go to our cursor and we're going to go ahead and use the warp tool. Now, the walk tool split into nine quadrants and we're only going to really use this right hand side sort of uh, three blocks here. And all we're going to do is we're going to just grab, say, for instance, here on this line, this point, drag it down until the lines start to look like they are moving into the height of the portal that we've created. And then likewise here too, like so, so that now our line here is guiding all these lines into the portal. And then if I zoom out, we're also then going to grab these nodes here as well and just stretch them out in a vertical fashion so we get more of a curved look. So everything's sort of curling its way in, which I think looks pretty good for your eye and watching the design. And then do the same at the top here as well. So we're curving those lines into the portal until we end up with a shape sort of like that. So take a look at mine there. You can see how I've distorted and created that curve. Don't worry about this right hand side edge because we'll erase that in a second. It's more making sure these lines all nicely curl into the portal. So when you're done, just hit the cursor at the top and then you've got your lines for the portal and it dragging this sort of universe into it. Let's grab our eraser though and let's tap on it and let's go to the airbrushing section and use this soft brush and let's erase just that right hand side edge. So my brush is set to 30% and I'm just erasing this right hand side edge uh, and if you go inwards a little bit, that's not a problem either. You're just softening out those lines, making their way into the portal. And that's actually pretty good in terms of the background. Maybe we could go ahead now and tap on this layer for the lines and use the option of alpha lock. And then in the palette, we're going to go back to this sort of dark blue that we used in the night sky. We're going to tap on that. And then we're going to go to our brush library and we're gonna switch back to our airbrush and the soft brush. And all I'm gonna do here is just add in some different colors within these lines here. So we've alpha locked the layer, meaning all we can do is paint within the lines that we've already drawn on here. So we won't distort the image in any way. But what I'm doing is just, rather than them all be bright blue, I wanna add in some dark blue in there as well. So I'm gonna set the brush size to roughly about 20%, but we're just gonna just add in some very soft bits of blue making their way through. We'll just break up those lines a little bit more and just add in some extra flavor of color in there as well. That's all you need to do for that particular point. And then we can take a look at it and maybe we could go ahead and reduce the opacity down just to soften the look a little bit more. So maybe something around about, let's go for 70%. Now the only other thing I want to do at this point is the internal side of this portal is actually looking a bit too dark. So I want to go back to my layers and we should have this layer clipped on the inside. Let's simply just swipe on it and duplicate it. And then if we scroll through the layer options, we can use the up option of color dodge, which will really punch out those colors on the inside, but just add a bit more glow in the center there. Because so, we want to make sure this is a really punchy highlight color for this design. So now let's work on our astronaut. Now I've put a color in the palette that you can see as a temporary color. So if we go to this layer here for our astronaut, tap on it and use the option of alpha lock. And then we go to our colors and we use this dark gray here in the second row. And we go back to our layers and we tap on the spaceman and use the option of fill. Now this is a temporary color. I've done it on purpose so you can still see all the shapes within the astronaut. Eventually we'll change it back to black, but you won't be able to see it against the background. So this is just a temporary color for the moment. And what we're gonna to wanna to go ahead and do, we're gonna to go to our layers 
we're going to create a new one and we're going to tap on that layer and use the option of clipping mask and all we're going to do now is go ahead and add in our highlights so let's go to our colors let's switch out to the blue the nice bright cyan turquoise blue and we're going to go to our brush library and use the soft brush now the first thing you're going to want to do is add in your very faint big highlights in terms of the big areas and basically just get an idea where the lighting is coming from now all the lighting obviously is coming from this right hand side so we want to make sure everything that faces the portal is going to be brightening up our astronaut so let's zoom in i'll give you an example let's let's first of all make our brush size let's go for something maybe five percent still pretty big let's reduce that down let's go for let's go for three three looks pretty good so what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint this arm here first and just show you what I mean. So everything here, we're just going over it very lightly and around the knuckles because that's where all the lighting is hitting. And now, so that's an example that all the lighting is coming from this right hand side. And so we're adding in our base layer of highlights first and then we'll go in and really punch them out in a second because highlights is all about layering up the color. So that's the arm. Let's take a look at the helmet area. So all the way sort of somewhat around the top of the helmet, around the front side here is good. Now, if you want to see your brush as well, like you can see on my screen, you can go to your actions, you can go to preferences and you can turn on the brush cursor so you can see the circle here like mine has around it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to start to then look at the legs first before we move on to the backpack area. And let's do the thigh area. So around the thigh onto the knee and then down the shin here on this right hand side again pressing very lightly around the ankle and that will do for the moment let's do the inside leg so coming down here all the way down into the ankle adding in that highlight and coming inside the body ever so slightly around the ankle and then onto the sole of the foot as well let's also do the tip of the sole of the foot here as well and then we're going to have to keep messing with our brush size because there's lots of different areas. So let's go for 2% now and just shade in the underside of the other arm as well on the opposite side. And then while our brush size is nice and small, let's do the sort of stomach area in here and then round the waist as well. So just a very brief look at the highlights. You can start to get an idea now that obviously all the lighting is coming from that right hand side um, and you've added in all the base colors. But what we need to look at is there's a lot of little details in here in terms of the pipe and the, the ear cup and stuff like that that also need detailing so we're going to eventually have to go in and fill them in manually which we'll do now so let's go to our selection tool and the freehand option and for this you're going to want to zoom all the way in and highlight the thing that you want to draw in only so i want to draw in this pipe only so i'm going to go around this part here and that's why i've drawn in the gaps here in the spaceman so that when you can easily just draw in those gaps and select the area that you want and then use your brush again and just highlight the right hand side edge like so and then you're going to want to go ahead and then select the little pipe entry part here so you're going to want to go to your selection and use the freehand option and just draw around this pipe entry here and then grab your brush again and just highlight that in like so and we might have to do that again a couple of times because we're going to build these highlights up and likewise the cup on the ear here i'm going to go ahead and grab my selection it's like an oval looking shape so you're going to want to go in here and you're going to want to just draw in these gaps like so and grab your brush and then just paint that edge in like so And then we're going to want to do the same for the backpack now. So this one here, we're going to have to also start to select the shape that we want individually. So let's go to our selection and we're going to want to draw in this space here. So let's go in the gap. If you rest your palm on the screen, sometimes it can be super sensitive and pop a little dot like it just did for me there. So I'm just going to draw now in this gap. And then just that's why, again, I've drawn in all the outlines nice and thick so that everybody can then just draw in this gap. You can take your pen off the screen in this particular tool and then carry on. So don't worry about doing it all in one go like I just did. Then grab your brush again. Now I'm going to increase my brush size to 3% uh, again and just highlight this side of the backpack like so. Now what we can do at this particular point is we could go ahead and then start to move on to the backpack. 
as well. So let's do the same. Yeah, let's go ahead and select the backpack with the selection tool. So we're gonna go ahead and freehand that line again, all the way down in this gap, making sure not to touch any edges. Now for this one, you can go all the way around like so if you want to, and then just go ahead and then start to just fill in this right hand side edge a little bit more on the backpack. Something like that is good. So let's now zoom out and take a look at what we've achieved so far. We've started to really highlight in the backpack area and the arms, but we wanna go ahead and really start to punch in the colors as well. So let's do that. Let's go ahead and now start to add in some really punchy highlights. Now what I always like to do is to do edge highlights on the opposite side as well. So let's now go ahead and reduce our brush size down to say two or 1%. I'm gonna maybe do two. And anything that's not facing the light, we just wanna give a very light sort of highlight to it. So I'm gonna start with the foot for example, and I'm just gonna edge around here. So that was probably too bright. You're just gonna to wanna to edge all the way around. And this is why I said about the tip about turning on your brush. We just wanna add that nice little slither of light just on the opposite side. Now we've done this before in a Patreon exclusive tutorial, the edge highlighting. So let's just continue to go all the way around the outside and it just needs to be nice and light. It doesn't need to be too punchy because the other side's gonna be where the majority of the highlights are. We're just edging that highlight around the edge here. Likewise, the inside of the thigh here as well. Let's go down there. And then let's switch over to the other leg. Let's go around the edge of the foot here. Around the ankle. You may end up with slightly brighter parts like that, and that's not a problem. All the way around. And we're just outlining our astronaut here. Around and then down the back of the leg, like so. Now that one was a little bit brighter. If you like the line though that you drew in, simply just go to your eraser and use the soft brush and just, you know, in a circular motion, just fade it out very lightly and just continue to just darken that down if you are happy with what you drew in. So you don't always have to just completely remove it and start again. Around the back of the highlight of the uh, backpack, sorry. Now going around the back of the arm, like so. And then let's go up to the helmet. We'll come back to the backpack in a second. And now let's go around the back of the helmet, like so and then around the back of the neck. And now the inside of this arm also needs to be done as well. So let's just go around here and around the back of the knuckle. And then we started to add in that really nice sort of edge highlight around the opposite side. Let's also do the same for the backpack. So we're gonna have to zoom in again and do the selection tool. So we're gonna go ahead and select that and use the freehand option again. And we're just gonna go ahead and select that shape. Now it doesn't really matter. You don't need to select anything over on the right hand side too much. It's just this edge that we need to make sure is good up here to so the edge that I'm doing now. So in that gap, all the way up. And then we can grab our brush and we should be able to now paint just within this edge here and around the edge of the backpack. So something like that. So that's our edge highlighting on the opposite side. Now we can really go ahead and punch in the color on the other side where all the light's coming from. So let's just continue with what we're doing. So you leave in the brush eyes nice and small. We're gonna edge highlight this again, but you can be a little bit firmer now with your color if you want to and really punch out those real brighter areas around the knuckle there. And also while we're here, just to save time in the rest of the design, increase your brush size if you want to and just stroke that edge even more creating a very bright highlight on the edge here, like so, and then around the knuckle. Let's then move on to the helmet. And so we're gonna go around the top here and really punch that in even more. I'm gonna go back in and reduce the brush size and just create that very bright edge highlight, like so really punching in that color. Now, what I really wanna do here is the visor itself is gonna be made out of a material that's gonna be really reflective. So the highlights are gonna be really punched. So let's go to our selection tool and let's draw around the visor, just this shape here. Again, making your way through the lines and then grab your brush. And I really wanna punch this part out compared to the rest because I want the, the lighting to be super bright in that area. And then when I tap on my selection, the visor part is gonna be nice and bright. We also need to bear in mind the ear cup as well that's on here. This needs to also have a very punchy highlight. So let's go to our selection. Let's go around the ear cup here, around this gap, and then grab your brush and then just really punch that color out on the right hand side edge. 
like so. That's looking perfect. And let's have a look at these smaller details in here, the little pipe work in here. So let's go to our selection again and select them. Now we could probably get away with doing them both in the same layer if you wanted to in the same sort of, uh, at the same time. So let's group both of them together. Let's grab our brush and then just edge in that highlight really punchy around the outside of the pipe and then blur it in ever so slightly as well. That's cool. And then let's continue down the rest of the body of the astronaut. So let's continue with our brush and jump in between that sort of two and three percent mark. So now starting here in the tummy area, just punching out that color here, going down the thigh, adding in that very punchy highlight and then coming inside the body ever so slightly, pressing extremely lightly to sort of blur it into the rest of the body. So round into the thigh itself. Let's go down the shin then and add that in. And then again, maybe increase the brush size back to two or three percent and just sort of glow that up a little bit more. Add in a little soft fade of that color and we'll really start to punch that out a little bit more. Let's go down to the feet and edge the highlight in here in the ankle. Now again, you could grab your selection tool at this point and draw around the sole of the foot as well. So just making your way through this very slim gap and around, don't worry about the left-hand side edge too much. And then just highlight in the sole of the foot, like so. And that's really starting to come to life in terms of where the, the lightings are coming from. And let's just continue that process on for the rest of the astronaut. So inside leg here, all the way down. It's a nice, easy line to follow. And then let's increase the brush size to about 3% and just stroke that inside leg as well, coming down into the ankle. And then I'm going to do the same for the foot. I'm going to outline the foot as well, the sole of it. And so going all the way around. Don't worry about the left hand side edge and then stroke in the sole of the foot like so that's a bit too bright that one looks a lot better so that's the inside leg of that done and the right hand side is also done as well i'm actually going to come back in here now and then let's have a look elsewhere how it could do with a little bit more of a shine on the top and the backpack here also now needs to be filled in as well with the sort of edge extra color so we're going to have to go ahead and create this shape again as well. So we're going to go back to our selection and the freehand option. And we're going to go ahead and again draw inside these lines. Inside that gap all the way up. Then around here, around the pipework into that selection. And grab our brush and just punch in the highlights. Mainly like down here and a little bit more up there on the top right because this arm's gonna hide quite a bit. And then we're gonna go ahead and then start to look at the rest of the backpack as well. So we need to add in a highlight in there too. So let's now do the same thing. Let's grab our selection and let's go up this line here. Go across this line here, nice and neat in this part. Go all the way around, that's good. And then into this gap here and then grab our brush and continue to paint that in. So we just want to glow in the rest of the, the backpack and then add in a much brighter highlight on this edge where the light's probably hitting and then maybe a little bit up there too. And maybe an edge highlight down the bottom while we're here, just a little one. And maybe even a little bit of lighting on this top corner here, wrapping its way around the astronaut. And then the final sort of little highlight we just need to be working on is this left-hand side. So just punch out this color here and maybe even just in here as well. So let's just reduce the brush size and just add in a little highlight underneath the arm and in there where the lighting's making its way through. And now let's just quickly change our Spaceman back to black. So we're gonna tap on the layer for the Spaceman, the dark version. We're gonna to go to our colors and double tap at the bottom to select black. Then we're gonna to go to this layer, tap on it and use the option of fill. And now that again, that will really start to bring your colors to life a lot more because they're going to really bounce off of the black background instead. Now the only thing I want to do is go back to my light blue color in my colors, go back to my layers and the highlight layer that we used. And I just want to edge in a little bit more of the color 
in this sort of edge here so around our astronaut sort of backside here just to add in some more color because it looks like a little bit of a wasted area so just inside here just underneath sort of the bum around the back of the leg we're just adding in a little bit more of a highlight and then thickening out our highlights again a little bit more just into the leg and just adding in some nice extra highlight just bringing it inside the leg a bit more just to outline that there is you know lots of material here as well something like that is good and then maybe under the backpack and in here a little bit and other than that let's maybe add in a little bit under the arm so we're adding in like little soft underglows at this point around the back of the arm around the back of the leg and around the back of this leg and that's it and we can then zoom out and our astronauts pretty much done the final step that i want to do is add in a sort of motion blur where it looks like our astronauts being dragged into this and is somewhat distorting like a black hole maybe so let's go to our layers our spaceman here we can go ahead and swipe on both layers so we've got the base layer and the highlight layer let's just group them together very quickly now i want to keep them separate just in case i want to make any changes so i'm going to collapse the group down but I'm going to swipe it to the left and duplicate it. And on the bottom one out of the two, I'm going to tap on it and use the option of flatten. So I'll get one layer for our astronaut. And now we want to tap on that layer and turn off the alpha lock. And now we're going to go to our adjustments. We're going to go to perspective blur and layer. Now perspective blur works in the sense where wherever you drag this dot, that's where all the angles of the lines are going to start to blur. So we're going to position our dot here on the right hand edge of our portal and I'm going to drag from left to right until all the lines start to disperse and I've gone up the percentage until I've hit, I've gone pretty far, I'm going to go for about 65% here so the, the sort of highlight colours here are starting to really push away from it and look like it's being dragged in. Um, and then you can like drag this around, you can get an idea of how it works. So something like that is good, maybe even bring it slightly closer into the centre. And now looking at the lines, we're going to go ahead and go to our layer. We're going to tap on it and we're going to scroll down to the option of add, which will get rid of a lot of the dark colors, but will really start to leave just all the highlights and give the look and impression that I want. Now, the only thing we need to do here is we just need to add in a bit more of a motion in there because at the moment those lines are pretty um, chunky and quite outlined. So we're going to go ahead and go back to our perspective blur and layer again one more time. Put the dot where we want it. So something like that is good and then swipe from left to right, and now we'll really start to disperse that solid shape. But we needed to create that chunkiness before just to really push the highlights away. So I'm gonna go probably quite high up, about 77% here at the very top. If you swipe from left to right, you'll see your little percentage bar. And then we tap on adjustments, and we've got our astronauts lines all nicely now getting dragged right in to our little portal. And then if I pop my pen on the top of the iPad, I pinch out with two fingers and go full screen with four, we end up with today's finished tutorial. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial of our little spaceman making our way into this portal. If you did, drop a like down below, helps the channel out an awful lot. And if you'd like some Procreate content every single week, hit the subscribe button as well. Be sure to share your designs with me on Instagram and TikTok. Both of the links are in the description down below. And as always, a huge shout out to my patrons. I'll throw their names up on the screen. If you want to get access to even more tutorials every single month that are exclusive to patrons only, hit the link in the description and show your support over there. And I'll see you in the next one.